Hi Floss Tube. Welcome to my channel. My name is Amanda May and I am here for almost my 50th but my 49th episode of Floss Tube where we celebrate all things counted cross stitch, sustainable stitching, and everything in between. new to my channel welcome I am an artist and designer behind the company Artith Design and you can find my goodies at artithdesign.com if you are returning welcome back I'm so excited that you're here with me today it is the last week of June 2019 which means in one week it's gonna be July oh my goodness and here in the United States in July, we celebrate 4th of July. Fair season will be upon us. Fair season as in like carnival ride type things and funnel cake and hot weather and all that good stuff. <laughs> uh, speaking of hot weather, it is rather warm, but I could not resist for the occasion. Today, we're gonna be celebrating Christmas in July, or I've heard it called Jolly July, or Flossmas in July, or Stitchmas. So in honor of all those good things, basically stitching something holiday related <laughs> in the month of July, I am wearing my Bob Ross ugly Christmas sweater. I have my found thrifty cardinal quilt. Uh, let me see if I can show you my Bob Ross here. It's pretty fierce. Okay, let me see. Oh! <laughs> Happy trees. I've joked that I don't normally like wearing anything with someone's face on my chest. And then I realized that I have a lot of things with Doctor Who on my chest. And so adding Bob Ross as well. He's no David Tennant, but. <laughs> Anywho, for this episode today, we're going to be celebrating Christmas, Yuletide, you know, cute little happy trees. I'm going to show you <laughs> what I've been stitching on this week. And then I've got a little calendar that I created I wanted to share with you. i love it if you stuck around and joined me while we talk about cross stitch. Oh, I also have Save the Stitches for this week. I've got a couple things. They are not cross stitch. They are crochet, but I do have a matchmaker find which what, what that means, if you've watched me my videos before, my matchmaker finds are when I find something at the thrift store or estate sale or yard sale, and it's an un, unknown to me cross stitch piece. And then I go through my old magazine, older, my vintage <laughs> magazines. And when I'm perusing, if I find the corresponding pattern that goes with the completed stitch. So I call that a matchmaker because pattern, stitch, put them together, there you go. So I do have a matchmaker and a couple little goodies that I found, stitching related things. So let's get started. I think we should start with what I worked on this week. I appreciate everybody who gave me some feedback on my Prairie Schooler. Do, 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 do. And I don't have much to report. However, I made a tiny little strawberry. I don't know if I can focus on it. I used the 14 count Darice, D-A-R-I-C-E. The font looks like the old school, like Mattel Barbie font anyway. It's a perforated plastic and it's a 14 count. And what I like about it is that it's super uber flexible. And I, I have never stitched on perforated paper because I am a big Frady cat. So, because I'm afraid I'm gonna rip the paper because hello, klutzy, like I, anyway. <laughs> So I'm really excited. I stitched this on perforated plastic. I used the strawberry here in the pattern. 
I used it with the two strands of Sulky, which is the equivalent of four strands of DMC. And I'm going to try to cut it out and see about at least using it as a finishing component. I don't know if I'm going to stick the little strawberry on the actual stitched piece or if I'm going to make a bow and then have that. And then I think I got to get me a covered button kit and figure that out because I need to make all the things. <laughs> all right. My next little bit of stitching, I worked on the needles dance and I am loving this piece. I didn't realize how many single stitches there are like in the little flowers. Those are like one little stitch here, one little stitch there. So I feel like I'm getting in the groove and then I got to change. And like I said, I thought about loading my needles with all the different, and then, but I can't. With small children, I have to inventory my needles. I got to make sure I know where my needles are at all time. I would like to have all five colors loaded on their own corresponding needle. But again, two small children, one is very curious. It's like, oh, let me put something in my mouth. You know, you know, you know that age, right? Yeah. So one needle these colors it's all charted i'm using all the called for uh 32 count fabric and the classic color works threads i got the box as a gift from my husband from inspired needle and yes thank you all who asked how he knew i totally sent him the url <laughs> so i sent him what i wanted and i said it i said you know for the present um idea because uh, my son just turned two so i got a birthday present so this is my birthday present uh anyway <laughs> love it so i i sent him the url and i told him i want this with 32 count fabric he thought i was speaking a foreign language he's like i don't know what that is i don't know what she means i don't know <laughs> When I got it, I said, you you did perfect, honey. It's perfect. And he goes, good, because I had no idea what you meant by 32 count. I had no idea. So maybe this year or next year, I got to teach him some more. If he's receptive, of course. I'm not going to be like, you must learn. But, you know, hey, oh, oh, you're curious. Oh, you bought me the subversive cross-stitch book. Oh, oh, would you like to learn more? But... <laughs> I say that, but he's the one at the thrift stores finding a lot of these things that I, I don't see. Now, granted, when you go with your small kids, like, it's hard to give 100% attention to treasure hunting for cross-stitch because you got to keep an eye out on the kids. And yes, my husband is a fantastic partner and he also keeps an eye on the kids. But there's like a, it's like, I feel... Like I got that eagle eye, like I'm zoned in, right? <laughs> so my focus, he, he, he's looking for cross stitch. I'm making sure children don't touch the breakables because I have a son. He's like a bull in a China shop. <laughs> All right. My next project is my Barbara Anna flowers from the sea. I absolutely love this mermaid. I can't get enough of this mermaid. Have I stitched the mermaid yet? No. But my basket's looking beautiful. I got a beautiful basket. I am almost done. And then I can move on to the mermaid. You know, this chart has 18 colors. I had no idea. It is all charted in DMC. But I am substituting. I substituted out for uh, some Sulky and the Nancy, the Victorian Motto Sampler Shop Teals. The Vintage Aqua some other good stuff here let me see if it yeah so I am just absolutely loving this basket I love it and the piece of fabric is a 28 count Charles Craft Irish linen and I got it it was one in the old school plastic clear tut like tubes and that was also found at the thrift store and fun fact sometimes there are fully stitched pieces that people stitch because, you know, process stitcher, hello, process stitcher, you roll them up, you put them in the tube, and then 20 years go down the road, nobody know, and they just donate it to Goodwill. So I always say be mindful of when you purchase a Charles Craft tube, number one, there might be a fully finished piece inside of it. Number two, there could be a partially completed <laughs> stitch inside of it. Three, 
someone could have cut out and so there could be it could look like a full piece but really it's it's been cut like different size projects so you really are taking a gamble when you purchase secondhand if you can't open it up and look and I mean that like a lot of the places around here they like do masking tape or they like seal it down so you can't a look at it or b you know walk out with it so those are just a couple things to keep in mind okay the next piece I have worked on is Carriage House Sampling's Comfort Lighthouse. I love this piece. Love it. I was sick over the weekend. Thanks, children. So I did get a lot of stitching in on this piece. And what I absolutely love about this project is it does have elements of heavy monochromatic stitching. So this took me a good chunk of time, but I also didn't feel well. So I didn't really have, I didn't have to worry about changing colors. I didn't have to really think other than just counting. So that was really awesome. And it, this, I feel like this is coming along quite nicely. I'm very happy with it. Again, the lighthouse and a blue heron, a gray heron, an egret. I'm not really sure, but I like it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Again, the 36 count Sea Fog R&R &R Reproductions linen using one strand of Sulky over two threads on 36 count. And I love it. So those are the projects that I have been working on this week. And oh my gosh, wearing an acrylic long sleeve sweater for Christmas in July is, is taking a toll on me. Hold on, friends. I'm going to go I'm gonna do wardrobe change. I'll be right back. <laughs> Sometimes I need to think about my choices, like long sleeve sweater when the heat index is close to 100 degrees. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> I'd love to show my Christmas ornaments that I designed and stitched last year. A little refresher if say you're doing 31 ornament stitches for the month of July and you're like you know Amanda May I just don't know what I should stitch well here I got you covered I'm gonna show you a couple of my ornaments and then I'm gonna go through some oldie but goodies uh, vintage ornament and Christmas holiday themed patterns that are in my stash so here we go. Let's get started. Number one, my little mod ornament I stitched last year. I love it. It's you. It's got some metallic elements to it, and yes, I wanted it to look really like mid-century fun. So there we go. There's one of my little ornaments that I designed and stitched myself. The next little ornament that I stitched. I recharted for 2019 and the chart is available if you're like, I love that, I want it. Here's my little squirrel. So I recharted it for with a nine for 2019. And I love this little ornament. And he's a little, he's a little, he's a, he's he's eating good, as they say. <laughs> he's my little squirrel. The next ornament that I designed and stitched is right here and it's based on the font from a 17th century Dutch sampler at the Metropolitan Museum of Art and fun fact there is a sampler section at the Met uh, online and there is it's an open access meaning it's in the public domain uh, free to use without restriction so the the alphabet is from that sampler. I tweaked it and then I added this stylized tree. So this is a adaptation as it will. Uh, it's not a reproduction, <laughs> but I, I added this stuff together. This I got, I decorated this with a dollar store red truck and then I added, because everyone knows I'm a sucker for a good button, I added <laughs> the buttons on the bottle brush tree. And yes, my weakness is red. 
vintage buttons and bottle brush trees. <laughs> uh, I love bottle brush trees. Here is my one tree and I have this actually out all year round because it's so precious. It can't be put away. I don't put it away. I can't. I can't. So <laughs> I brought it out to show you my little bottle brush tree. And so those are the ornaments that I have stitched and designed and I have them up for digital download at my on my on my website. And the next thing I want to show you is I had so much fun thinking about Stitchmas, Flossmas, Jolly July, stitching Christmas in July. With that said, I ha I was thinking about Santa Claus, Saint Nick, all the good things, right? And I was looking at my advent calendar that I had created last year. And I was looking at this little face and I pulled out my stuff and you know, a couple hours later, I modified him. <laughs> Flossmas in July. What is he wearing, you ask? Oh, he's in his Hawaiian shirt or his camp shirt or Aloha shirt. And he's wearing his fun little hat. And his beard is bedazzled or embellished. Fully actualized with a lot of summer themed ornaments in that beard. A couple years ago and last year, they came out with a little beard bedazzle things like where you could hang glitter and little ornaments off of your beard. So I have palm tree, flip flop, <laughs> pineapple. I have not turned him into a full coverage chart, but if anybody is interested or would like to stitch Santa, let me know below and I will see about making that happen. And I was thinking if I do translate this art into cross stitch, here you could add on his beard, you could add little charms uh, from retreat, you could add vintage buttons, you could add like the one missing earring, you know, or you get you get what I mean, like little little tidbits on his little beard. Anyway, he inspired my cover art <laughs> for my little Christmas in July. I made up just a quick little PDF file. You can find it. And <laughs> I got a little calendar. little, And then your little writing down, you know, for 31. If you want to 31 new projects, 31 ornaments, 31 things that you're working on. And in it, I have created... A couple of new designs. I have not fully actualized them through stitching, but there I, I I have the computer generated showing of it, and they're fun. Uh, I'll have just a quick the the black squirrel ornament, my cute little black squirrel. I'm gonna have that in this PDF with the 2019. So, and then I have a little a little mermaid. Candy Cane Cove Mermaid and her hair and her body are peppermint candies. And then festive flip flops. So we're going to have those three little patterns. So one like kind of primitive, traditional, and two, I don't know, fun and frivolous. <laughs> I started designing the Candy Cane Cove mermaid as part of my series my small and sweet sampler series that has banana pants purdy and taffy pulling terry on the beach so it's loosely based on that <laughs> anyway if you would like my little file the little pdf with just a couple pages calendar write down your ideas for what you want to stitch in july or what have you in those three little patterns so you can find that i'll, I'll link that below and if you're like, Amanda, 
Amanda May, I don't know what I want to stitch. Well, here are some ideas. I know a lot of floss tubers are showing you all of their new their ornaments that they're working on from magazines within like the last five years. Yeah, you've seen it. If you want to see the uh, the antique ones, <laughs> come over to my channel. All right, we got Charted Christmas Kids. This one with his little font. Look at that font. And <laughs> I really liked, where is it? Here it is. The little stove. Look at that little stove. So cute. Okay, the next one is, I really liked this Be Jolly Santa. I thought he was really cute. He's a le the Leisure Arts be jolly. And I liked that there was a little bunny rabbit in there. I think it would look precious. You don't have to stitch all that. Just stitch the circle and the hat part. The next one is, oh my gosh, this one is so cute. Of course, there's the geese. Disregard the geese. Yes, there's a teddy bear. However, look at that little bear. And look, look at that. They're up on their little hind legs and the bunny and they're blowing the trumpets. Oh, so precious. This is another Leisure Art leaflet. I have Santa's, all the different iterations of Santa. And this is American School of Needlework. I, I have a thing for these star Santas. I think they're really fun. So here, I like, I like him, the Celestial Santa. So I have him, them in my collection. Of course, I have to show you a Jeremiah Junction. Cute little checkerboard Santa. I like I like this one because it's got the cuckoo clock. I've always wanted a cuckoo clock. I just, I think they're the cat's pajamas. And the stockings. The next one I believe is also a Jeremiah Junction, is it? No. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. Okay. They're singing, but I liked the tree the tree here. The next is Yuletides and it, these are all stitched on, it looks like either white perforated paper or the perforated plastic, but I liked this one, the silhouette of Santa going through. And I liked this here. This is Heartstrings, Tis the Season. And it's, uh, I like that celestial with the moon and the stars, the Santa. There's the star Santa again. So precious. So there's that one. Some more ideas are, of course, there's the towels. I'm not advocating that you stitch on towels, but I really, the hot air balloon. In my area, there's a, a business and they do hot air balloon rides. And every so often, I get to see the hot air balloon either first thing in the morning or at night. You know, so you're like feeding the fish and the hot air balloon's going by. <sighs> amazing. Amazing. It, you know, it's amazing. Here is snow and ice. I liked the monochromatic, the snowman. I liked this scene and it's on that, like the printed... I know Fabric Flare has a huge selection of the printed fabrics. I was thinking this tree scene would be really lovely as well with a custom dyed uh, fabric. <sighs> Under the sea, doesn't she do that painted fabric? I mean, wouldn't that be wonderful there? And the ice skaters. What I like about this one is that it is winter themed rather than religious based or uh, Christmas specific. Okay, the next one is this sampler, and I like the little Santa here and the sampler. And the same, I believe this is the same designer with the angel. Um, I, DKJ, I haven't seen anybody stitch these recently. I'm not sure of their availability. Um, but this one is the Angel of Christmas. Oh, look, another Jeremiah Junction. Ah, I just think they're really cute. I'm a sucker for a good nutcracker. 
I played the Nutcracker in the Nutcracker when I was younger. And yes, I I promised uh, Sarah King, our Stitching Kingdom, a photo of me dancing in the Nutcracker. So I still have to see if I find that and make sure it isn't lost forever. Oh, can't resist a good Nutcracker. I know Satsuma Street has the beautiful 12 Days of Christmas and Long Dog uh, Jenny, she a Long Dog Stitcher, she is doing, she stitches those up. Well, here is another iteration of the 12 Days of Christmas. And I love a man in a good tight. I mean, really, a good tight. Drummer boy. Is he, see here, I can't figure out if he's posing nicely, like on the ground or if he's mid jump. I don't know. I don't know these things. Milking. <laughs> the next is Hickory Hollow. And I liked the sleigh. Again, these are all on towels, but disregard that. I mean, you could make these into a small. Don't, just because it says towel doesn't mean you have to do it on the towel. I liked this because it has the black Ada. I really like the look of the black, that, that chalkboard look and the black, the darker fabric. Hello, needles dance. Here is another <laughs> ornament collection. I liked this. Uh, of course, the little kitty cat is precious and it looks like a little gnome. Uh, there's also, I liked the Victorian house here. I really liked this right here, the mid-century look. And the Santa. Wow. Okay, I like them all. I like them all. Here is... <laughs> now this is, this one is truly vintage. Look at him. Look at him doing a little wink. He's doing, he's like, yeah, I, I got you. I got you covered. And look at these little stockings. And that looks like a little pug puppy. So I really like that I'm with a little stocking. But look at him. I, As a Santa, I like him a lot. I, I will not be stitching him this year, but I like him. Another iteration of the 12 days of Christmas. I would obviously not finish them with ruffles. But... Another thing to think about, I really like, I like this one. Look at number three. Isn't she pretty? A little cutie. All right, Christmas counts. I cannot do a vintage Christmas tribute without including a pattern from Designs by Gloria and Pat. Pat Carson, here we go. There we go. Christmas counts. Look at those cuties. And there's a little reindeer bell pole. The ruffle. I'm gonna turn this around. I look at this black work. If you are religious and you like this, like the story of the three wise men, beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. I love these miniature, the miniature looking bell poles. It's got angels, Noels, the smalls, and there. Is Silent Night. Ding, ding, ding. It's matchmaker time, y'all. Boom. I got this piece last year. I have not fully finished it because I didn't know if it was done or not. I didn't know what to do. The back, it's not my back. I don't judge backs. I don't, okay. But we got metallic. We got Silent Night stitched on a navy blue 14 count ada and darn tootin i think that is a done stitch if i do say so myself silent night comment below tell me how i need to finish this and i gotta make this happen <laughs> save the stitches i got some vintage linens for finishing i got look at this crochet look at this isn't that gorgeous I love these so much. Oh, another save the stitches, another doily, and I love the pink and the three-dimensional aspect of it. I love. 
this embroidery with the the colors I want to color match this palette I absolutely love it wouldn't this be wonderful as like this as like a sunflower so I want to see if I can match these colors and do something because I absolutely love this this is a it's what is called a dresser scarf and I know there's a lot of uh craftivists that take the dresser scarves and then in the center here they stitch like subversive sassy or political statements you know on all spectrums so that's just another idea when you see dresser scarves and you're like Amanda May I can't I cannot have one more dresser scarf in my life I don't have that many horizontal surfaces and the horizontal surfaces that I do have are covered in piles of craft supplies just think you get yourself one of these and you stitch something in the center <laughs> okay I also got a rug mug. Look at this little rug mug. I love it. I don't know who stitched it, but I got me I got me a little a little rooster and I love it. Perfect for my patriotic display and summer display. My last two things that I got, I picked this up last year with the idea of putting seeing if I could put something in the center. I don't know what this is. If any of you know what it is, you could let me know. This since in the here there's glass, but wouldn't a, a finish look awesome in that for Christmas? And my last thing is this basket. I love it. I don't know what it's originally made for, but I got it and I cannot wait to use it. And sustainable stitching. Tops of lids from Juice and Creamers. Maybe make little pin cushions with those. And my caboodle. I'm using it. I got me, I got all the goodies in here. I've got my scissors, my highlighter, all the things. I want to thank all of you for coming and joining me for Christmas in July, Flossmas in July, Stitchmas, Jolly July, all those good things. I appreciate you. You are awesome. Just remember that. Your stitching matters. And what else? Have a great week. If you are in the United States and you celebrate 4th of July, with, whether it's with sparklers, fireworks, at home with Ben and Jerry's ice cream, or you don't celebrate at all, I hope that you have a beautiful and safe day. Safe being the operative word. Sunscreen, spray and neuter your pets safe stitching, all the things. Okay. <laughs> Have a beautiful week. I'll see you next week.